Wow, we are here back in the studio and we've got Amber with us today. Let's hear from Amber. Brilliant. <laughs> Amber, you work for Siemens, don't you? Siemens Energy. Tell, you, tell us exactly what you do there then. So in Siemens um, Energy, I work in the aeroderivative gas turbine business, which sounds like a crazy title. But basically, plain engines that we go and we put into a big metal box and we use it to you know, pump oil and gas or to produce power. And I remotely monitor those gas turbines. Wow. So you remotely monitor and they're placed all over the world doing their job yeah. that they're generating electricity or whatever. And you're sort of making sure they're still going. Yeah, exactly. Making wow. sure that, you know, they're, they're not breaking, helping customers resolve issues. Yeah, it's really exciting. And exa just explain to us, what is a gas turbine and how does it work? So I have like a really easy way of explaining how a gas turbine works and it's with four words. Right. So it's suck, squeeze, bang and blow. So I have a little model here. Yep. Um, so the air comes in. So yep. that's the suck. And then it is compressed through a series of blades. Uh, okay. So that's where it's squeezed. Yep. And then we inject some fuel in there and then we ignite it. So that's the bang and then it comes out the back and it's that momentum energy that then drives blades round and we turn that, you know, that rotational energy and then we convert it into electricity that we use day to day for So everything. if it was a jet engine on a plane, a, a turbine, that would be pushing the air out behind and then it gets faster so more air comes in. But yours are in a box and so they're generating power for something else. Yeah. So, so why do you need, uh, a, a, say, a, a gas turbine generator on a... You put them on oil platforms and all sorts yeah. of things like that. What do you need them there for then? So for our oil and gas, it's stored really, really deep down like below the ocean. So we have to like pump it up. So we need a lot of energy. And then we also need to pump it from offshore to onshore. So you need a lot of energy and gas turbines are really great at doing that. And what else do they do? They, they're in the fields somewhere else and all over the place. What are they doing then? So, for example, you've got like your paper mills. So producing your toilet paper, um, they need a lot of power to do that. So gas turbines can run those industrial purposes. Really? So there's like units in the UK that are big factory and stuff that are run on gas turbines. Yeah. And, and that we just don't know about as a sort of general public. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And how many are there of them sort of under your remote monitoring then? How many have you got? Um, so I have about 200 gas turbines all around the world that my team take care of. Wow. And what do you think the future of the energy industry is then looking forward? I think the, the energy industry is going to change a lot. Obviously, we talk about going green, being carbon neutral, which is basically making sure that we're not damaging the environment. So as we move forward, we're looking at how do we put different fuels into our gas turbines so that they're not emitting horrible greenhouse gases. So stuff like hydrogen or even just moving more towards renewables like wind and solar. I think they're going to become a lot more common backed up by gas turbines, whereas currently gas turbines uh, the majority of the energy. So if you lost the sun, or if you, lo as in not lost the sun, but if the sun went behind clouds and there was no wind, your gas turbine would kick in, give it a bit of time, but could be using hydrogen, which would then obviously, and then presumably you could use the, the, turb the wind turbines and the solar to help make your hydrogen that you used in the gas turbines in some way. So it would be kind of helpful. Yeah, so we can extract hydrogen through electrolysis. So we're going to do an experiment later that shows you how you get hydrogen. But it's a really simple process. But obviously, on large scale, it needs a lot of power. So that's where your wind turbines come in, solar. Yeah. Brilliant. Because one of the big problems is, obviously, you need fuel in these turbines. And at the moment, that would be gas or, or something else. And that gives off like, um, you know, your, 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 your greenhouse gases. Yeah. But with hydrogen, you don't get that, do you? The, the, if you burn the hydrogen, what do you, what's, what's the sort of the, the gases that come out of that afterwards then? So hydrogen doesn't release those harmful gases, so that's CO2, because we've broken that down. So, you know, you get like water vapour and, and that's, that's it. So wow. you get that oxygen and we're protecting the environment by moving to that. I mean, we've got a way to go because hydrogen's really hard to store. It's hard to move around, but we'll get there because we're engineers and it's what we do. And you can make hydrogen from seawater, can't you? Yeah. So water mixed with salt, which is the experiment we're going to do. Right. You can get that, that hydrogen out of that H2O. Wow. And will it, I mean, have there been trials for hydrogen on these turbines yet? Yeah, so we've actually been able to run our gas turbines on hydrogen for over 30 years. Wow. It's just that now we're trying to bring the content up. So we want to be able to run on 100%, whereas we've proven it with a blended fuel mix so far. 
Brilliant. So it is coming. It's something that's going to be another way of creating energy without maybe having the sun and the wind, but still using a supply of something that's not going to affect the environment. Yeah, exactly. Wow, what a great job.